Hi, this is Synth Chaser from SynthChaser.com. Today we're going to be continuing the repair and restoration of this Prophet 5 by rebuilding the power supply. So let's get the power supply out of the keyboard. The first thing to do is to make sure that the keyboard is unplugged. You definitely do not want this to be plugged in when you're uh, messing with the power supply. You'll open up the case, and I showed how to do this in the previous video. There's some screws on the back panel and underneath on the bottom. And then you'll be able to lift the top part up and set it down in the service position. We're going to be taking the top part off and setting it aside. And to do that, we're just going to disconnect a few connectors. So there's one here on the right, and there's three here on the left. Now I'll be able to lift this up and take it away. So here's the power supply still mounted in the bottom of the case. There's a few different revisions of the power supply. Uh, this particular one is, uh, has three power rails, plus 15, minus 15, and plus 5. Uh, earlier revisions of the Prophet, uh, I believe uh, 3.0 was the last revision that had uh, two extra rails plus 12 volts and minus 5 volts uh, because they used some ROMs, some different, different ROM chips uh, that needed extra rails. Uh, so your power supply may differ from the one that I'm going to be servicing, but fundamentally it's the same and the kit that I have on my website has the parts for all revisions of the Prophet 3.0 to 3.3 power supplies. The power supply is a very simple design uh, it uses uh, high current bridge rectifier diodes, large filter capacitors, and uh, either fixed 7805 or adjustable LM317 or 337 voltage regulators uh, for each of the rails. It's a very simple design. There's not many parts to it. And we're actually going to be changing most of the parts uh, we're going to be changing all of the uh, diodes on the power supply board. We're going to be changing all the capacitors, the electrolytic and tantalum capacitors. And we're going to be changing the voltage regulators, which have been stressed for many years of running at the limit of its current. So because this wiring harness uh, includes the jacks and the uh, transformer here, and they're all hardwired in, uh, there's going to be no way to pull this board out completely aside from desoldering these wires, which I'd rather not do. But we can get the power supply out enough that we can work on it um, here on top of the bottom of the case. So the voltage regulators here are uh, screwed onto the heat sink, so we're going to need to remove those. On the back side, there's a nut, and I'm going to grab it with a needle nose plier so it doesn't uh, spin freely as I try to unscrew it. And then I'll just... Uh, Unscrew each regulator. With the regulators unscrewed, the next step is to pop these capacitors out of their little brackets. There might be some glue here, which you can just pick off with your fingers. And then just pop these capacitors up. and pop it out like that. So now we can get to the back of the board to work on it. I can see that the old thermal uh, heat compound, uh, heat sink compound is all dried up. There's dust and junk all over everything, even in there on the heat sink uh, that's preventing good thermal heat transfer from the regulator to the heat sink. So even if we weren't going to be uh, replacing the regulators, we definitely would want to clean them up and, and put new uh, heat sink compound on them. We'll now try to discharge the large capacitors. Um, while I'm pretty sure that they're not charged, uh, before I go touching them uh, to remove them, I, I would like to know that they're not charged. So I'm going to take some needle nose pliers and just touch it across the two terminals. If you get a big spark, then it was charged and you did yourself a favor. If nothing happens, like uh, just here, then better safe than sorry. So I'm going to take off the uh, large 
uh, computer grade capacitors. There's just uh, screw terminals on the bottom. So you'll just unscrew these. You don't even need to solder them. Once you take the screws off, they'll just fall out. Um, this one seems to be electrical taped into place. So we will grab some scissors and cut it free. With that stuff out of the way, I'm able to take a close look at the board and I see that the magic smoke has escaped from this tantalum capacitor at some point in time. You can see the big char mark underneath it. Uh, that is the reason that we want to get all of these out of the synthesizer um, because these, uh, these are unstable. They're not, tantalum capacitors aren't necessary um, in any of the applications in this keyboard. and. Uh, they can be unstable over time and, uh, and short out like this. Now I'm going to remove the rest of the components. I'm going to start by clipping the tantalum capacitors off the board. I'm going to desolder this big capacitor and get it out of the way. Next I'm going to clip the high current diodes off. They have rather thick leads. This will allow us to use less heat to get the, the rest off. Now I'll desolder the holes. And finally there's a little diode here which will uh, snip off and then desolder. This makes the uh, 5 volt rail actually sit one diode drop above ground, so 5.6 volts instead of 5 volts. And the last step in the uh, depopulation of the uh, power supply is going to be to remove the voltage regulators. So their uh, legs of them are, are soldered to wires which are soldered to the board and rather than soldering new wires up uh, and then soldering into the board. It's just simpler just to snip them off here. And then we'll solder the new regulators to the existing wires. So here's all the old junk that we removed, which includes the uh, nasty old voltage regulators and the tantalum capacitors, including the ones, the one that was fried. And uh, here's the stuff that comes in, in my kit. Uh, we got new, new diodes, uh, new electrolytic capacitors to replace the tantalum, new voltage regulators, and we'd have uh, all five of them in case we had a revision 3.0. Uh, and then we have the new filter capacitors, and they're the same physical size as the old ones, but they're much, much better spec. So these original ones are. Um, 85 degree Celsius rated, the new ones are 105 degree Celsius rating, which means that these capacitors will last a lot longer. Uh, this is a higher voltage rating, so even though we don't need it to be that high, the less that we push the limit of the voltage limit of the capacitor, the longer it will live. And then I've also increased the values of capacitance on all of the, the filter capacitors in the kit. And here's the naked circuit board. Pretty much there's just the trimmers and a few resistors left there. And now I'm going to start populating it again. I'm going to start by placing the diodes. So the five high current ones and the one lower current one. So with the diodes in place, now I'm going to place the electrolytic capacitors, the smaller ones that are going to replace the tantalum capacitors that I took out. And uh, again, because my kit covers revision 3.0 as well, there's going to be a couple electrolytic capacitors that are left over because those voltage rails were removed by this revision of the profit. And uh, finally, I'll, I'll place this uh, last leaded capacitor right here. And uh, now with that stuff in place, I'm going to solder everything into position. 
Now I'll put on the voltage regulator, so I'll strip these wires back a little bit, solder the voltage regulators on, and uh, put a little bit of heat shrink over the connection and the legs of the regulators, so uh, if someone bends something, they don't short against each other. Here are the three new regulators uh, that I've connected to the existing wires and heat shrunk into place. And uh, now I'm going to remove the old mica insulator and clean the old heatsink compound off the heatsink. I've got the heatsink cleaned out looking really nice, but before I uh, mount the voltage regulators back there, I'm going to screw in the uh, large computer grade capacitors. With the large capacitors mounted, now I'm going to put the uh, insulating wafer onto the back of these voltage regulators. I'm going to put a little dab of thermal compound on the back of the IC, and then I'm going to take one of these mica pads and set it down on top with the hole lined up there so it, so it completely covers up that heat sink and doesn't allow it to touch the case. And I'm going to put another dab of uh, thermal compound on the back of that and then mount it here. There's these little washers that uh, fit in here so when you screw uh, when you screw the regulator down to the um, heat sink, uh, the screw doesn't make contact between the IC and the case. So it's going to be a good idea to verify the continuity to make sure that none of these regulators are shorted to the case. So you can see that the, the screws that hold the regulators in they're all shorted to the case, or there's continuity between them and the case. But we want to make sure that that heat sink here on the back uh, has no continuity to the case. So we're just going to probe all three pins of each regulator. And confirm there's no continuity to the case. And that is the case, apparently. So unfortunately, due to the design of this power supply, the rails won't be in regulation unless there's a load attached. So we could do uh, a few different things. We could connect a dummy load. Uh, we could connect an electronic load to actually load test the power supply. Or we could just hook it back up to the keyboard, which is what I've done here. This will also show you how you can test your power supply uh, when it's installed in the keyboard. So we're going to fire this up. And no smoke is coming out, so that's always a good sign. I'm kidding. Smoke never comes out with me. Um, so I'm going to put the black lead here on the ground. The uh, wires are, are nice, nicely labeled on the power supply. And I'm going to probe the minus 15. And I get minus 15.03. And I can adjust that rail with this trimmer here. And uh, I'll do that... Um, I can do that later once I finish the, the rest of the work on the, the recapping of the rest of the keyboard. So now I'll come over and I'll test the uh, plus 15 volt rail. So here we have 14.95. So again, a little adjustment would be helpful. And the uh, 5.6 or 5 volt rail is tucked away here. It's this orange wire. I'm going to stick my lead in here. I get 5. 744. That one's not adjustable. The 15 volt rail is adjustable with this trimmer here. Uh, but 5.7 is, is fine for that rail. So I've showed you how to remove, uh, rebuild, and test and calibrate the power supply of the Prophet 5. We also saw some of the dangers of leaving the original tantalum capacitors in the keyboard. If you have any questions, uh, please post in the comments or contact me through my website, synthchaser.com. I have the kit for the power supply rebuild and the full recap as well on my website, synthchaser.com. And in the next video, we're going to be installing the remainder of the kit on the remaining boards of the synthesizer. So I hope you'll join me for the next video. Thanks for watching and have a great day.